what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Mordai J and we are locked in this is power book four episode nine now we've seen that dmac he's been harassing tommy asking him man let me get a job i'm good with numbers so tommy says he might have a job for him tommy also found out that dmac is his nephew when he followed him to his stash spot now jp has a job also he's working in the lab with liliana trying to get this damn recipe down so he can cook up some stuff and also the big thing we seen was Vic Flynn got shot at and Gloria got hit. So you know that's gonna leave a bad taste in Walter's mouth. Now before we jump into it, shout out to the notification game. If you're new to the channel, you'll be a part of it. Hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Hit that like button, it's the easiest thing you can do. Now we're gonna jump into this episode because this is episode nine and we know that there's one episode left before the finale. So that means there's gotta be a lot of action and this could be the episode where we see everything build up so the war can take off in the finale. So let's jump into it. This is Power Book 4, Episode 9. The first thing we get is a flashback. And we see Vic in the vehicle with Gloria. She shot up. He's all scarred up. And now he's in the hospital with his dad. Now, Walter, he wants to know exactly what happened. But of course, in his mind, he's thinking that Tommy has something to do with this. Now, we know Tommy didn't do anything with this. But what he's doing is getting in Vic's head and thinking... He would be the one that would do this. Tommy never could be trusted. And I've been telling you this from the beginning. So he's also filling up Vic's head that he was messing with Gloria. Even though Tommy is the one that told him, hey, you need to leave. Vic is starting to believe his father because Gloria was shot. And he's looking at it as, if I can't have her, you can't either. So now Vic, he's starting to turn against Tommy and he's leaning towards going with his father. Now, I mentioned in the intro that Tommy thought about giving D-Mac a job. And the job is, since he's good with numbers, he's going to be the one counting up the money. Now, he got him in a little vault. He in here, he got the security cameras. He's over here counting up them hundreds. And he's telling Tommy some interesting facts that $100 bills have more germs on them than a public bathroom. And Tommy's like, uh, I, I don't want to know anything about that. But also, what he does tell him is, I knew somebody that was smart with numbers, but they're dead now. Now, when you think back, who did he know in the OG power? Ghost was good with numbers. Even Kanan was good with numbers. But, of course, both of them are gone now. But he's also treating him kind of like Tariq. And he's telling him, dude, you're smart. You don't need to be out here selling drugs. You need to be worried about your future. Now, I'm looking at Tommy like, okay, that makes sense. But you still have him in here counting up this money. So if you really want him to focus on school, then remove him from this scenery and go and roll him in Stansfield with Tariq. <laughs> we know our boy Just a Problem, a.k.a. JP, a.k.a. Just Pretending, a.k.a. Jugging Pots. He's talking to his dad and he's telling his dad that he actually called Kate to tell her about Miriam passing. Now, he didn't really talk to her too much because, you know, she wasn't trying to hear that, especially after she left JP. But JP was telling his dad that maybe I was thinking that she would hear my voice and she would want to come back. And maybe she's been thinking about me every day since she left me. But we know that's not how Kate is. And that's one reason Tommy didn't want anything to do with her, because she isn't really like that mother figure. Kate is going to be Kate. You know, and sometimes she might be strung out, but she's not going to be there for anybody. So JP really just made this call for no reason. Now, you know our girl Claudia. She got the girls working the clubs. Now, you remember the redhead girl is the girl that she used to set up her brother Vic to at least let him know that Dahlia's in the street. Now, she's out here and she's, you know, saying making some plays happen at the nightclub. She's dropping off some of the product. Claudia's seeing it. She's rubbing her hands like Birdman. And what does she do? She gets in there. She starts kissing her. I'm like, OK, I see you, Claudia. But she gets a phone call from Walter. You need to get home right now. Vic was shot at. So she kicks her out of the car. She pulls off in a G-Wagon because we got to get back to Flynn family business. Claudia gets back to the house and Walter's telling her, look, we got to be a family. Gloria was killed. He was covered in her blood. He's still in shock. So I'm going to bring him to the house for a little bit just to change the scenery. Now, what he's trying to do is bring his family together. We know that he's been filling up Vic's head with Tommy is the one that may have set you up and did this. Now, Claudia, we know her and her dad, they weren't always on the same page. But now she's hearing that her brother was getting shot at. 
she's starting to look at it like our family we need to stick together and that's one thing that he wants her to know is like you got to look out for your brother because at this point he's a little bit vulnerable now claudia hears this from her dad but she needs to go talk to vic just to see his side of the story now he's already got it in his head that maybe dad is right maybe tommy is the one that did this now you got to remember claudia and tommy they are working together with dahlia so she's saying it doesn't make sense why would he do that and that's what vic is saying oh man he never respected me he always looked at me as just the prince and the, basically a spoiled kid and i'm not really ready for the streets now walter hears this and he's like what did i miss because he's still trying to get the family together because he wants his son to take over the organization but you got to remove tommy and that's one reason he brought tommy to the house to try to get tommy on their team because he knows his son is easily influenced by him Liliana comes to the pad and she finally tells Tommy that, hey, Vic was shot at. And they thinking that it was the Serbs. He's like, Vic was shot at. Now, you remember Tommy gave him a car and told him and Gloria to get up out the city. Now, we know he didn't have anything to do with it. But when he hears that, he's like, was Gloria with him? And Liliana says the lady at the hospital didn't mention nothing about no girl. But she also is like, why are you worried about the girl? Were you messing with her? He said, yeah, for a little bit, but... We, we dead at that, and I was actually trying to look out for him. So now, Tommy's starting to hear everything that's going on in the streets. So, of course, he's going to wonder what's going on with Vic because he hasn't heard back from him. Claudia and Walter, they're starting to get closer. Now, before she heads out, she's got to make some plays. And he's saying, I need you. You know, he knows that she has the brains. She can run the operation. And I told you guys in episode one that I thought she would be the one pulling strings behind the door you know what I'm saying behind closed doors it would be claudia eventually running things now he's saying i really want you here and i want you to be a part of this family and she's saying that's all she ever wanted she wanted to get in the family business and he also told her whatever you're doing with tommy you need to cut that off now she does get a phone call from tommy but she doesn't answer it because what she's seeing is maybe tommy did have something to do with my brother getting shot now my family were starting to bring me in on the operations so i need to stick with my family and kind of tune tommy out we see both of the flynn kids they both go to their father and they start apologizing and trying to settle their differences of what they had in the past vic comes in and he's telling his dad i know we had our differences but look i want to be a part of the family also i want to make things right because now he has that anger and i told you guys you don't want to move with emotion when you use your heart like what our boy Vic is doing right here because he's heard about what happened to Gloria more than him getting shot at so he's telling his dad I want to run the organization the way you want it ran I want the family the Flynn family to be strong and this is what Walter's always wanted now he's kind of been taking that advice from Paul Uncle Paulie when he's been telling them listen to your kids do what they want to do sometimes speaking of Uncle Paulie He's always right there when it comes to Walter because Walter sometimes makes some irrational decisions. We know he started up the war with the Serbs, right? He went in there, he shot all three of them. Now, paulie has been telling them, we don't have enough manpower to go to war. But my son just got shot at. So we're calling in the big guns. And I'm talking about the four horsemen from Ireland. And Paulie, he doesn't want to do that because starting a war with the Serbs is just going to be all bad in these streets already when we're down 18 percent on moving our pills but walter doesn't want to hear that i'm in charge call him up get the private jet and let's make it happen because we going to war don't nobody shoot at my son and think they're going to get away with this we got to head over to the lab because first of all we got to see if just the problem is <laughs> causing a problem or not now when they get there they're asking how is he doing dr williams is like oh, he messed up a little bit but he's he doing all right now, Tommy's like, good, because it's payday now. Y'all know the deal. Don't spend this money all at one time. Don't buy nothing that's traceable. And don't spend over $10,000. Because you do that, that means the IRS is about to be notified. But that's neither here nor there. JP's talking to Tommy like, look, thanks for putting me on. I've never made money like this. Maybe I can work a little bit longer than to the, the, the debt that I got. And Tommy's like, no, you're going to work. You're going to make however much that dad is. And that's it. Now, he's trying to get in touch with Claudia. But we know what's going on with her. 
her and the family, they're separating themselves away from Tommy right now until they can figure out what's actually going on or we can get Tommy up off these streets. D-Mac is out here getting some real money now with Tommy and he runs into his boy Marshall. Now you remember Marshall, he had outed him on the deal with Buddy. Well now it looks like Blackson and Jannar, they went out to Buddy and they X'd him out. So now all he has left in these streets is D-Mac. And he's like, man, look, I apologize, man. You like a brother to me. Go ahead and hit me and get your lick back. D-Mac doesn't hit him, but you know, they squash their little beef. That's what boys do. Now, D-Mac is saying, you want to get back at CBI? Because he has a plan. You know he's getting money with Tommy now. You know he has a connection with the Dahlia. So he's trying to come up with his own little plan so they can get some money on the side. Dirty Cop Bennigan. Now, we know that he's a little bit in debt because he owes this white guy another $50,000 on top of the 50 that he already had to give him. But he did make a deal with Vic where he said he was going to get double whatever he was getting paid at first. So he's like, all right, man, you got to give me some more time, man. I can maybe come up with like 20000 30000 But he's like, no, nah, Ben again, you're going to come up with this money now or the whole force, they're going to know that you're in on the take and you're going to get exposed. Then your sister, a vegetable, they tend to die without money. So Ben again, he has his back against the wall now and he has to make some shake or he'll be exposed and he'll be going to jail. The four horsemen pull up from Ireland, private jet, big guns, all the luggage you need. Ammo, we got it. Long range, we got it. Up close, we got it. Silencers, we got it. Polly's there, we got the SUVs, they drop their stuff, they hop in. Welcome to Chicago, boys. So the war is about to begin. Tommy and Liliana, they're talking, and they haven't been able to get in contact with Claudia. Now we know that Vic got shot, so that's what's going on in the streets, but we still need to get in touch with her because we need to get this work going. Now. Liliana, she has loyalty to Tommy, and she's saying maybe we can get at her, hurt her up, you know what I'm saying, rough her up a little bit. And Tommy said, ooh, I like the way you're thinking. We need to cover up the bruises, though. meaning we're not going to physically hurt her, but we're going to get at Claudia so we can tell her, that, hey, we need to start making some moves out here because uh, we got money, and we got to keep this thing going. We haven't heard from Diamond and Jannard, so... Here we are at the barbershop downstairs. Jannard is talking to Blackston about how he's about to take over. CBI is about to be his. He's going to dethrone his brother. He's going to do exactly what he's been telling Elijah he was going to do before he died. Now, the thing is, Diamond's upstairs and he's listening to it. And you can hear Jannard downstairs, man, F my brother. CBI is mine. I'm about to take it over. So Diamond, he goes in the back and he acts like he didn't hear nothing. So when Jannard comes up, you can tell that something is, is something is off with Jannard because he's acting a little awkward. And Diamond's like, oh, no, little bro, you know what I'm saying? I love you, man. You know what I'm saying? We CBI. We going to do this thing. But it's looking like he may have to off his brother because Jannard, this has been his plan the whole time. Take half of CBI and at the end, I'm going to be running it. And now Blackson is his right hand man since Elijah is gone. But he doesn't know that Diamond heard everything that he said. Tommy finally pulls up on Claudia because they need to talk. Now he finds out that, okay, Vic was shot at, but y'all thinking it was me? And she starts explaining that, you never respected my brother, Tommy. How could you do that? And Tommy's like, no, me and Vic, we had our differences. Yeah, we had the glory of the situation, but we got past that. It's all business now. Long story short, she tells Tommy, you need to watch your back. So Tommy's looking at it like, you really going to just do this? Like, go behind my back and not believe what I'm telling you? When I've been getting money with you, I helped put you in the game? And now you tell me I need to watch my back? Tommy is one person you don't want to tell that to. Y'all know what Tommy is capable of. We know Ben again is in a, a sticky situation, having to come up with $100,000. And you know he ain't even got it. So what does he do? He pulls up on Diamond. Now these two, they've been butting heads ever since Diamond got out of prison. And what is he doing? I wanna go to the safe. Bennigan pulls the gun out, take me to the safe. Now Diamond, he's trying to talk his way through this. Man, maybe we looking for the same thing. Bennigan's like, nah, man, we, we on different paths. You know what I'm saying? We in the same building, but we got different views. We are not the same. 
I am not one of y'all. So Diamond, he just listening. He's like, all right. So instead of giving him a hundred thousand, he gives him a hundred and fifty thousand. And the reason I say he does this is because, you know, if somebody desperately needs one hundred, you might as well give him one fifty just on top of it, so to kind of get him off your case a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That'll give him some wiggle room. Because if they ask for a hundred thousand, they need a hundred thousand. But if you give them more than what they ask for, all right, cool. They may lay low for a little bit, but. Bennington did pistol with Diamond, so you know that's going to backfire on him later on. Diamond's all knotted up. Now, he goes and talks to Adrian at the diner. You know, where we met her at. We had that dinner, and then we had breakfast in bed, and <laughs> breakfast again. You know what I'm saying? Now, she's asking him what's going on, because she wants to be more involved with him. It's not really her pursuing a story. She says that she actually likes him, and he's saying, my past is catching up to me. But she wants him to go into details. And I don't think he should do that just because she still is a reporter and anything can be used against you because you never know. But Tommy ends up showing up. And what Tommy is showing up for is he knows that he's potentially at war with the Flynn's. So he's asking Diamond, can I get some muscle? But Diamond knows at this point he can't offer anybody because he needs to watch his brother Jannard and see what they got going on. That's because he knows that they're trying to overthrow CBI. So right now he just lost $150,000. His brother is against him. And now Tommy needs help. But he can't help Tommy out in this situation. With no help from Diamond, Tommy has to go and talk to our man Mirkovich. Now he gets over there and he's talking about, look, I need muscle. I need some hitters. And he said, all right, 1.5. He's like, all right. And I'll throw in another 500000 if you tell me who killed Gloria. Now, it turns out one of Mirkovich's boys is the person that did it. Now, Tommy is teaming up with them. Yeah, it's, a, it's a pricey little move, $2 million. But what does he do before he leaves? Mirkovich tells him who is the one that killed Gloria. Now, you remember Tommy killed this guy's brother. Remember, he hopped out the whip. Him and um, Liliana, they killed the other brother. Well, now he shoots this guy because he didn't get to look the other one in the face. D-Mac did have a plan, and the plan was him and his boy Marshall, they're going to go talk to Buddy in Gary, Indiana. Now, you got to remember, D-Mac, he's on the inside now with Tommy. He's counting the money, but he also got a brick of that Dahlia. Now, they go out there, and you know Buddy's out here tripping. We don't know which way he's looking, but he's like, oh, y'all got work? Okay, cool. But at first, he thought that they were trying to set him up. So they show him that they got a brick of that Dahlia. And he says, if y'all can't get me four bricks, then I'm going to have to kill y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm messing with CBI, but y'all saying CBI ain't got nothing and y'all supposed to be the plug? Okay, bring me four bricks or y'all dead. So at least they in the game, but can they get four bricks? Claudia was out and about, and she just seen Tommy coming out of the building with Mirkovich. Now, he did drop off $2 million, so she gets right back to the house. She's telling her dad, I should have never doubted you. I just seen Tommy with Mirkovich, and now the whole Flynn family is against Tommy. And that's why Walter is saying, I told y'all, y'all need to start listening to me. So Vic, you know what he wants to do. He wants to be the one to get rid of Tommy because he killed Gloria. He wants to do this for the family. So, man, this Flynn, hey. They getting ready to get busy in these streets and they got the four horsemen. Yeah, we got an all out war about to go down in these streets of Chicago. Tommy gets back to talk to D-Mac, see what's going on. Now, D-Mac just went to Gary, Indiana. He set up something with Buddy. So he's like, Tommy, guess what? Guess what? I went out to Gary and I and I got to connect out there and we need four bricks. And Tommy's like, whoa, what are you doing? And Tommy gets mad because what are you doing, bro? I didn't tell you to do that. Did you drop my name? He's like, no, nah, I was just trying to make some money. And you know what I'm saying? Prove my word. Tommy just told you, you need to get out of the streets. You don't need to be doing any of this. Now, this is where he tells D-Mac that, hey, I'm your uncle, bro. D-Mac pulls a gun out on him, but then he runs out. Because he doesn't really know what's going on here. And to tell him that I'm your uncle out of nowhere, he's like, man, I, I really can't deal with this. Tommy follows D-Mac to his little stash spot. Now, D-Mac, he's just processing everything. And he's like, man, when I went to the old house, I was following you. And I seen you in there with him. I didn't know you was family, man. 
And Tommy's like, man, don't worry about it. It's, it's all good, man. I'm your uncle. But we need to tell JP about this. And D-Max's like, man, you the adult. You should be the one to tell him. Especially since you already knew. So Tommy, he agrees. I'm going to tell him. But he also tells him to put up all that stuff that you got, man. Don't be toting these guns. Like, you don't need to be involved in that. As they're walking off, you see a red SUV pull up and they get the bust in. Blip, blip, bap, bap. Tommy starts shooting back. Ping, ping, ping. You look over, d mac and got hit. He's talking about Uncle Tommy. Now he got to carry him to the hospital. And this is the moment where he actually tells JP, you know that kid that was shooting up the club with the dreads? That's your son. That's d mac Darnell. And JP's like, man, why didn't you tell me if you knew this for so long? Now my son's fighting for his life. But Tommy didn't know how to tell him this. But now we're in a situation where d mac in the hospital, your nephew, JP's son, and we got to figure out what we going to do. The Flynn family, they're meeting up with the four horsemen. Now, Walter told Vic, you're going to be in charge of all this. I set it up. You run the play. Now, when the guy comes in, the head of the horsemen, he's looking at Claudia like, when did they let the girls sit down at the big boy table? And Walter says, look, my son is running it, and you're going to need my daughter's expertise and her intelligence. So shut it up, and let's make it happen, because we need to get all of these Serbs, and especially we need to get Tommy Egan up off these streets. There you go, episode 9 of Power Book 4. Let me know what you think about this war that's about to take place. Tommy and the Serbs versus Flynn's and the Four Horsemen. Which side do you think is going to prevail? And also, between Diamond and Jannard, how is that going to play out? Is Jannard going to take over CBI or is Diamond going to have to get rid of his brother in the finale? Let me know what you all think. I'm ModiJ. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.